instant reaction after the Iowa women earn a number one seed in the NCAA tournament, and they got a difficult draw in this one. Plus, the Iowa men qualify for the NIT. What's the path for the Hawkeyes as they try to make their way back to another NIT Final Four? That's all today. Locked on Hawkeyes. You are locked on Hawkeyes, your daily podcast on the Iowa Hawkeyes. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Hey, welcome in. I'm Trent Condon, and this is a Locked On Hawkeyes podcast. Thanks for making Locked On Hawkeyes your first listen every day. We're available wherever you find podcasts. You can also find this on YouTube. While you're there, make sure you hit that subscribe button just takes a moment and helps us get in front of more Hawkeye fans. These days, every new potential hire can feel like a high stakes wager for your small business. That's why LinkedIn Jobs helps find the right people for your team faster and for free. Post your job for free at linkedin.com slash locked on college. Terms and conditions apply. Well, we got a lot of basketball here today to get into. We open it up on the women's side of things as the Iowa women have qualified for the NCAA tournament for a, with a number one seed for just the second time in program history. I have to go back 32 years the last time that Iowa was the top of the bracket uh, back in a very different era for women's basketball. We will get into that and the bracket that is in front of them. Good news, bad news, certainly on that front. Plus, a little talk on the Iowa men as they make their way to the NIT. Get a home game. That'll be happening on Tuesday night. And we'll talk a little bit about the parameters and what's going to happen going forward there. But let's open up with the big story. That is the Iowa women as the number one seed. Not a big surprise after winning the Big Ten Championship a weekend ago uh, with the overtime victory against Nebraska and punching their ticket back in as the automatic qualifier for the third consecutive year from the Big Ten. We knew the path was going to be difficult. We knew that it was not going to be easy to get back to another Final Four to do it for just the third time in program history. It was going to be certainly more difficult, maybe even than it was a season ago when the bracket opened up. We had Ole Miss beating Stanford. I uh, had to take on Colorado a sixth seed instead of third seed of Duke in the Sweet 16, even the Elite Eight game. We had Louisville there as opposed to a team like Stanford in that Elite Eight. But hey, you want to win a national championship, it's going to be difficult. And, you know, I've noticed a lot of hand-wringing about just how deep the bracket as a whole is. Here's the good news, especially when you're talking about the Elite Eight and just how stacked up the bottom of the bracket is with, of course, LSU, the defending national champion, as the number three seed, and UCLA as the number two seed, who was a number one seed for a lot of people throughout their projections throughout a big portion of the season. Here's the great news. Well, you'll have to play one of those teams. If you get to the Elite Eight, you're going to play somebody good, and you're going to have to only play one of them. And upsets still can happen. That is still something that absolutely still can be out there, as we certainly learned a season ago. But let's open things up at the top, and they will await the winner of the play-in round. Well, play-in is not the correct terminology. The first four, as they have 68 teams also in the women's bracket now. Uh, that opened up a couple of years back. So it'll be the winner of Holy Cross and UT Martin. That will be the first-round matchup for Iowa. That will be a Saturday game as the Hawkeyes will open things up. No surprise, there will be big national TV uh, for that one. That will be a 2 o'clock game on ABC. That's right, national TV, even for a number one against a 16. And that just shows you, obviously, the power of Caitlin Clark and this Iowa women's basketball team and, and the way that they continue to sway po power. The first game on ABC that day will be UConn. We know about there, obviously, following and the way that not only do they fill up their building for every single game, but also what they do traveling. And most importantly, for these purposes on the television, that'll be the two o'clock game. Then after that, for Iowa, as they await the winner of the matchup between Holy Cross and UT Martin. Then it gets a little more juicy. You get the primetime matchup on Monday night, and they will await the winner with the win against Holy Cross or UT Martin of West Virginia and Princeton. Now, West Virginia comes from the Big 12, has some nice victories this season, have been a great team. Uh, overall this season. Been very solid, though. In fact, many people think that they were maybe a little bit underseeded uh, for these purposes. They were a team that could have been a tick higher. Uh, I've seen plenty of that talk about them. And then Princeton, who comes from the Ivy League, a Princeton program that here recently has pulled off big upsets in the NCAA tournament. They've done some 
really good things uh, in the past. Uh, going back to Carly Littlefield, the former Waukee point guard who uh, played there for four years, then went on and played her final season in North Carolina as Princeton does not allow uh, their uh, players to have that grad year uh, there. So that's a difference in the Ivy League. Uh, they got an outstanding point guard, though. A really good point guard that uh, throughout the last couple of years has been outstanding. One of the best point guards in all of America. So that's what they have. And that's kind of where do you start with that one. I think it's going to be a really compelling game. Princeton does play very much a slowdown type of style of basketball. They're going to want to play at a different pace. Uh, that one you see from West Virginia, a team that is more willing to get up and down the floor and do things a little bit different. So that's what you're going to get there. Uh, West Virginia on the season, they finished tied for fourth place with a 12-6 and six record in the Big 12. Uh, in fact, they finished ahead of Iowa State in the Big 12 this season. We know what a good year they had in making that run to the championship game. 6-4 and four on the road this year. Uh, four and one record on neutral floor. So pretty good on that front. Four and seven against quad one, seven and no against quad two. Uh, some of their best victories of the season in the non-conference. Not a ton there. You know, they beat Penn State by 18. Team, obviously, Iowa got to know really well. They did most of their damage uh, in Big 12 play. They won at Kansas State. Nice road victory for them in that one. Uh, one at UCF and at Cincinnati. Neither of those teams very good. Still won those games. Beat Iowa State, the aforementioned Cyclones. Uh, won a game at BYU. So they bet, beat some of the bottom teams on the road, which you need to do. Uh, beat TCU on the road as well. Uh, before the end of the season, they lost three of their last four games. Uh, lost in overtime to Kansas State. Lost to Baylor by a point. Lost by seven against Oklahoma State before winning one game in the Big 12 tournament and then Kansas State. So as we get deeper into this, obviously we'll break things down after Iowa. They're going to win that first round game against whoever they face. They'll cruise in that one. We'll take a little deeper deep look uh, once we find out who does win that um, first four game in the first round and, and dive in a little bit deeper on that front. Uh, the big question, though, and the big talk has been about the rest of the bracket and the way the rest of this bracket looks and the way that it's certainly set up for Iowa. So in the Sweet 16, first, that's a big part of this. If they win those first two games, move on to the Sweet 16, you know, who's going to be sitting there? Who's going to be awaiting them? And really, when you go through and you look at these matchups and the way that it's set up, you get just a whole lot of teams that they've seen before. Which is odd because Kansas State is a team that they've seen twice. First of all, to play a non-conference team twice in a season is weird. You don't have that happen very often, and and you just don't see that very much. They're the number four seed in the project team, at least according to seeding, that is going to get there. The other game, the five twelve matchup, is Colorado a team that Iowa saw last year in the Sweet Sixteen returned a lot of talent. They are in the running for a top two seed. Uh, for a long portion of the season, wheels kind of fell off for them as the season went on. Or Drake and the Bulldogs, of course. We know how good they were. The buzzer beater to punch their ticket to the NCAA tournament as a number 12 seed. You do wonder if uh, Drake would have lost that game against Most State. If they still would have got into the NCAA tournament. Maybe they would have been one of the teams playing in the first four. But regardless, they get their ticket punch, and they sit there as a number 12 seed. A year ago, they played really well against Louisville, had Louisville on the road to team that made it all the way to the lead eight. So uh, potentially could be there. Uh, that will be played, though, in Manhattan, as Kansas State, the four seed, will be able to host in the first two rounds. Then the bottom half of the bracket, it's it's more that similar teams, teams that you know, Louisville, the team you played in the lead eight. LSU, the team you play the national championship. Creighton, the team that you lost to two years ago in the round of 32. And then the number two seed is UCLA with, uh, well, a big center that Iowa was very involved with, or at least tried to get involved with when they were shopping in the portal back in the spring. That's what it sets up. We know the importance of staying away from South Carolina. That happened. We're going to dig a little bit more deep into this and talk a little bit about the Hawkeye men. Iowa is on to the NIT. What does a run mean? for Iowa men's basketball. If they can make a run, what does that mean? It's some big picture stuff as well for the women's team. It's a bracket breakdown, instant reaction. The brackets are in. What a great time. Get those pencils out. Put it in pen. Are you somebody that likes just one bracket? Do you like multiples? We will talk brackets and break things down from an Iowa perspective. That's as we continue Locked On Hawkeyes. This week's March Madness Bracket Highlight is brought to you by our friends at Nissan. Each week, we're picking one team that stands out, a team that pushed it further than the rest. Just like the all-new 2024 Nissan SUVs, these guys were able to take it to the next level. The Auburn Tigers and 
former Hawkeye assistant coach Bruce Pearl, can only be described as a pathfinder. They've been thrilling to watch and have really created a lane for themselves after claiming the top spot in the SEC. As they knocked off the Florida Gators in the SEC Tournament Championship, they're set to make a run in the NCAA Tournament. Saw Auburn a year ago, Iowa did in the first round of the tournament. Uh, that was not so much a neutral court being played in Birmingham. Auburn this year, they get shipped out west. They'll be heading out to Spokane. Them and Alabama are both going to be there. Both teams played in Birmingham a year ago. And now, enjoy your time in Washington State. Take the Nissan Rogue, Nissan Pathfinder, or Nissan Armada and go find your next big adventure. Shop NissanUSA.com. That's NissanUSA.com. Today's episode of the Lockdown Hawkeyes podcast is also brought to you by Amazon Fire TV. Fire TV is your destination for sports, from live games to highlights to in-depth analysis. Fire TV offers amazing viewing experiences with smart TV TVs, as well as the Fire TV stick. You can just plug into your existing TV, and it's going to provide access to millions of movies and TV episodes, as well as free and live TV. Whether it's opening weekend for baseball, college basketball tournament, you're going to want to have a Fire TV. Fire TV also recently created Fire TV channels going to deliver a constant supply of the latest videos from your favorite sports brands, all for free. That includes all of us here at Locked On and most of the pro big, big pro leagues and college conferences as well. Fire TV channels lets you dive into all the game analysis, highlights, and more to keep up to date on the latest in the world of sports. March Madness, NBA, MLB, and a whole lot more. Not to mention great news, entertainment. Check out Fire TV channels on Fire TV and Alexa devices. If you haven't checked out Fire TV channels, you should. Trust me on this one. To learn more, visit Amazon.com slash TV. That's Amazon.com slash TV. Trying kind of back with you once again here on the Lockdown Hawkeyes podcast. As always, thanks for making Lockdown Hawkeyes your first listen every day. Let's jump into the men a little bit. We got more thoughts on the women's basketball team, and uh, we will get into that here in a little bit. But to the men and the NIT bracket that is in front of them, look, overall, it's fine, right? It's fine. This is a team that had made five consecutive NCAA tournaments, or would have, with 2020. They would have been a projected sixth seed in that NCAA tournament, and then were safely in the bracket that season. It's something that hasn't been done since Lute Olson was a coach at Iowa in the late 70s into the early 80s. It's something that this program just had not seen in a very long time. But the lack of success come March and the way this one ended. First, you look at the matchup in the regular season finale against Illinois. You get blown out. In the first 10 minutes of the game, you get some good shots. You're not able to knock them down either. Run out of the gym. You come back. Brock Harding had a good half. You come back. You get it within four and just never could get over that hump because of the big deficit that you faced. You go to the Big Ten tournament still with hope. And against Ohio State, that hope was extinguished early again. Just, again, couldn't get over the hump. Couldn't get stops defensively. It was more of the same. and. On an island, that's not a big deal. Look, this was a team that was going through rebuilding, a four-player incoming freshman class, something you don't see a whole lot in college basketball as a whole, and four guys that saw varying degrees of uh, playing time throughout the course of the season. you got a star in Owen Freeman, a guy that is a great building block for the future of this program. We saw ascension out of Josh Dix this year and becoming the player that I think we all think he can eventually be, which is a really good one in the Big Ten. Obviously, Peyton Sanford, what he was able to do. And though the end of the season didn't go very well for Tony Perkins, you're still left at this point thinking, all right, things are looking okay. And then he loses to Ohio State after the loss to Illinois. And the old wounds are opened up again, right? The old talking points about Fran and March and the struggles and the one and dones, not just in the NCAA tournament, and not getting to the Sweet 16, but even in the Big Ten tournament. You know, that run that they made winning the championship a couple of years back with Keegan and company. You know, it, in a way, I think masks just how terrible Fran McCaffrey's teams have been in the Big Ten tournament. And not just losing to Ohio State in a game where you're a slight uh, underdog in that game against the Buckeyes. That's one thing. But when you look at it in its totality, it's hideous. I mean, there's losses to worse seeded teams in a nearly yearly basis for this Iowa basketball program. It hasn't gone well. And, and that all comes back 
we open up those wounds again and we go down that path. And those teams entertaining, at least to watch offensively. They can put up points. They play an entertaining style of basketball. The fan base is checked out. And we can talk about what the women's program has done and their ascension, what has led to this moment. And there's only so much, you know, income that people have that they're willing to pay on basketball. There's more things to do. We can make all the excuses or reasons, what depending on what your point is. But what we do know is this fan base is out. And they're very frustrated about the way that this has gone. And they should be. Look, I'm not happy with the state of this Iowa basketball program. I'm not happy that they missed the tournament for the first time in five years. It doesn't excite me. But to go deeper and think that Fray McCaffrey is a bad coach, he's not. That Iowa's next coach is going to be better than Fray McCaffrey, it's no sure thing. You don't want to be scared to make a move. You don't want to be scared to try to elevate your program. I understand you want to get to a next level. We tried it before. It didn't work. We tried it from Dr. Tom. And we did it. Many of the same reasons that we're talking about here. And people remember, obviously, what happened in his final season of beating Arkansas in the round of 32 and getting the Sweet 16 down in Phoenix and playing UConn as well as anybody did till the national championship game when they beat Duke. I mean, Iowa played well in that game. I had a great season. But one game didn't erase the decade previous where Dr. Tom wasn't able to get it to the second weekend. It's difficult. And a program like Iowa, where the investment is about football, the investment is women's basketball, and the investment is wrestling, in a way, men's basketball is shortchanged. And until that changes, I don't know how much more is going to change. Look, you can change a coach. But if you don't have the money to go along with it in today's environment, not a whole lot's going to change. Is Darren DeVries going to be a guy that's going to excite the fan base and all of a sudden they're going to send sell 11, 12,000 tickets next year? No. There's all kinds of goofy rumors out there. Fresno State was was uh, excited about him. And then this Twitter account that was doing it and locked up their account. I mean, just weird. The coaching carousel rumors, and, and that's all it was. We're happy to pass along rumors when they have at least maybe some kind of validity. Or we'll just tell you they're crazy rumors, like we talked about with the Patrick McCaffrey thing. And that's all it is. We're happy to do that because we're just talking here. We're just having a good time. We're not going to throw out rumors that could be hurtful. I don't think that Patrick looking around for one more de destination is a hurtful, hurtful statement by any means. But that aside, we're here to talk about the here and now. And so we go into this NIT game to get Kansas State. A Kansas State team that's been inconsistent. One of the highest rates of turnovers in the country. I mean, you can get them playing fast. You can make them play ugly. We've seen that throughout the course. You get the number three seed, and that also shows you how far out of the bracket Iowa actually was. You know, with all the bid thieves that we saw throughout the course of this weekend, all the big upsets that happened, teams coming out of nowhere to win conference tournaments, Dayton's still in the A-10, and Duquesne goes on and wins the conference tournament and what gets into the tournament for the first time since 1977, and they weren't alone. I mean, there was a ton of that happening throughout the course of the weekend. Even if Iowa would have went to the Big Ten tournament, beat Ohio State, and beat Illinois, I don't think it would have been enough. I mean, they probably had to get to the championship just to maybe get a chance to go to Dayton, which going into the week last week felt crazy. Yet that's what the way that this played out. We kind of talked about this a bunch. It's not in a vacuum. It's not just about Iowa, right? It's about everybody else. So Iowa, as mentioned, gets Kansas State. Get a home game. What's the attendance going to be for that? I mean, are we talking about another half full Carver Hawkeye? Now, talking to people that have been in some of the past NIT uh, games for the men's side, it said it's been some of the best environments, at least for men's basketball in Carver Hawkeye. And though they haven't always been sellouts, it's been people that want to be there, people that are happy to stand and cheer, people that want to be loud, people that maybe for the one of the few times actually get good tickets close to the court and just create a good environment. But can you have a good environment with 7,500 people in a building that seats 15,000? It's going to be tough. And then not only that, if Iowa does win, if there's an upset on the other side of the bracket, if we have that and an upset happens and all of a sudden Iowa has another opportunity to host if UC Irvine gets by Utah, can they? Nobody's had a definitive answer on that one. If they'd be able to play a game 
which they'd have to put, you would think, on Sunday. But with the NCAA taking over for the women's tournament, probably not. Do they just give the game to UC Irvine? Does Iowa have the ability to host it in the Quad Cities or in Des Moines? Go that route. Even Cedar Rapids. Have we got anything definitive? We wait and see on that front. A run in the NIT can be exciting. I was done a couple of times. You go back. We mentioned that game in the mark that they played back in the mid-90s. And they made that run and lost in the quarterfinals to Penn State. That was fun. That was just a couple of victories. But the momentum started to build. Fran early in the tenure, making the run all the way to the championship and getting to Madison Square Garden. No, no, no MSG in the NIT now. They moved it around. It was Vegas last year. This year, the final four of the NIT will be played at Hinkle Fieldhouse in Indianapolis. So different thing to shoot for, but still cool venue, old school. Nothing wrong with that. Iowa K-State, 8 o'clock tip off. Get there if you can Tuesday night. If Utah wins, they'll be traveling out to Utah, play them over the weekend. And then a top half of the bracket, Villanova is the number one seed. The number four seed is Central Florida. UCF will play host to South Florida, who won the regular season in the American Athletic Conference. Uh, so those are the teams there. Villanova, by the way, gets VCU on the top half. Um, on that side of the bracket as well, Indiana State is the number one seed. However, their coach perhaps is going to be the Billiken head coach uh, by the time you hear this down in St. Louis. Cincinnati, the two, Bradley, the three, and Butler is the number four. That's their side of the bracket in the NIT. To make the exciting, the NIT, excuse me, exciting though, you got to win games. If you're one and done, you win a game, lose a game. That's not the way to create momentum. Is Fran do anything different here? Playing time? Or is he going to ride with the old guys? Going to ride with Cricky? Really struggled in the back half of the year. Patrick McCaffrey, we've talked about his inconsistency. Or is he going to go a different route? We will see. Talked about the bracket on both sides. Let's talk a little big picture stuff. When we come back, Caitlin Clark and the Iowa women. What a run can mean. What these final one, two, up to six games can mean for Iowa women's basketball. We'll do that as we continue. This is Locked On Hawkeyes. Today's episode is brought to you by LinkedIn Jobs. When you're hiring for your small business, you want to find quality professionals that are right for the role. That's why you have to check out LinkedIn Jobs. LinkedIn Jobs has the tools to help find the right professionals for your team faster and for free. I'm a small business owner. Finding somebody and doing it quickly, efficiently is incredibly difficult to do. That's why I love LinkedIn Jobs. LinkedIn isn't just another job board. LinkedIn has a vast network of more than a billion professionals. It makes it the best place to hire. It gives you, it gives you access to professionals you can't find anywhere else. LinkedIn does all this while making the process easy and intuitive. Hiring is easy when you have that many quality candidates. So easy, in fact, 86% of small businesses get a qualified candidate within 24 hours. LinkedIn is constantly finding ways to make the process easier. They even launched a feature helps you with writing job descriptions, making the process even quicker and easier. Two and a half million small businesses use LinkedIn for hiring. Post your job for free at linkedin.com slash locked on college. Once again, that's linkedin.com slash locked on college to post your job for free. Terms and conditions apply. Trent kind of back with you one final time here on the Locked On Hawkeyes podcast. Thanks for making Locked On Hawkeyes your first listen every day. Uh, big picture stuff for the Iowa women. And we will break down the games, the potentials uh, that they're going to see a little bit more throughout the course of this week as we count down to tip off. But the opportunity that's in front of them. Yes, the path is going to be difficult. It's likely going to be more difficult than it was the season ago, at least to get to the final four. Great news. You're on the other side of the bracket from South Carolina. You're going to get advantageous television windows. They're going to want to put Caitlin Clark and company in the best windows possible. But this is an opportunity here to really build the brand and build the brand for Iowa women's basketball, which has been a very successful program throughout basically 40 years. And going back to see Vivian Stringer and what she built in the 80s and into the early 90s and making a Final Four then, having a number one seed then, though upset by Southwest Missouri State, there was a lot of great things. And Angie Lee, early on, had some success. It fell apart. And Bluter comes in. And here we are 24 years later. 
always a program that was consistent, solid, good offensively, not great on the defensive end of the floor, but entertaining brand to watch. Good teams could win a game, maybe two in the NCAA tournament. Remember, many of the same knocks that were against Fran McCaffrey were the same ones that we heard about Lisa Bluter. But that aside, excuse me. And here we are now with a chance to really cement this program, not as a blue blood. They're not there yet. There's a long ways to go to be not just at the level of Tennessee and UConn and even programs like Notre Dame that have been so successful and done it through a couple of different coaches, South Carolina, what Don Staley has built recently. But get on the cusp and be not just a team that is good enough to be Sweet 16, not be a perennial top 25 program, but take it a step further. They need players. And as we talked about last week with Deal coming in, that's step number one. And you need to see more of that. Her and Journey Houston are from Davenport North. Those two coming in in next year's class, the class of 2025. That's exciting. Ada, Ava Hyden coming in uh, this year, big post player that can really help out inside and, and maybe take away some of the deficiencies that we've seen from them in the middle this year. But it's all in front of them. And when you have Superwoman on your team, when you have Caitlin Clark, things aren't impossible. And going into the game against South Carolina a year ago, myself and many other pundits thought it was impossible to beat the Gamecocks. And Coach Fitz came up with a great game plan, even in her quote-unquote retired state, and put it together, and they were right there. And ultimately, they win that game against a team that many people believed was unbeatable. Iowa did that. They did it behind a 40-point performance from Caitlin Clark. She can do special things. It's going to be tough. Everybody's gunning. We heard the West Virginia coach say right away, we're going to end Caitlin Clark's career. Or Let's go do that. Win a game and then end Caitlin's career is what he said. There's going to be a lot of that. The target is on their back. I believe more than South Carolina, more than UConn, LSU, the defending champion. It is number one on Iowa's back. But what a run can mean for this program, big picture, I don't know if it can be measured. The opportunity's there. Let's have some fun. Let's win six. Let me say about that. Thanks for making Locked On Hawkeyes your first listen every day. We are with you each and every day throughout the course of the week, talking Hawkeyes with you. Spring practice is starting up. We'll have some insight from what happened at the Pro Day earlier on Monday. We will talk about that on tomorrow's podcast, break things down there, and get you ready for Iowa Kansas State in the opening round of the NIT on the men's side. Thanks for being with us each and every day. Thanks for making Lockdown Hawkeyes your first listen every day. We'll talk to you again tomorrow. Go Hawks.